I am so excited to take you along as I travel Bali, Indonesia, showing you not only a bunch of different things to do, where to stay, where to eat, and of course just the experience being a black woman in Bali. An adventure, like we said, like we promised. Like we promised. Because it's always an adventure with us. Always. At my girl's house, we are getting ready to catch our first 12 hour flight. That's right, 12. And first, I said both of those words, there'll be two 12 hour flights, which I feel like I knew and didn't know and just lied to myself about. So. This is what we are wearing to get through 24 plus hours of travel. Wish me luck and I will keep you guys updated along the way as to whether or not this was a good life decision. We'll report back. I flew from Detroit into Miami to spend time with Chrissy from the intro who you may remember not only from my trip to Costa Rica, but more recently, my Royal Caribbean cruise vlog as well. We chose to fly out of Miami through Turkish Airlines because they had the best deal at the time. Like I mentioned, the flight from Miami to Istanbul was 12 hours, then we had an 8 hour layover. to take advantage of my Chase Rewards cards. That priority pass came in so clutch this trip. Getting into the IGA lounge, a full buffet, getting four hours of Wi-Fi because you only get one at the Istanbul airport, which was new to us, and just getting to lounge and relax before our next 12-hour flight from Istanbul into Bali. A few important things to keep in mind before you go to Bali, in case no one has told you, the best time to travel is usually April through September, just because that's when it's the drier season. However, rain can happen year round, so just plan accordingly. The other thing is that if you are traveling from the US, you are going to need a visa. You can actually apply for that online. I have a link for that in the description, and you can even fill out the customs form online beforehand as well, up to three days in advance, so that will save you a ton of time going through immigration. If you got your visa and did your customs beforehand, getting through customs in Bali was actually super quick. It took us maybe an hour to go through customs, grab our bag, and find our driver to get to our hotel. There are tons of amazing places to stay in Bali. I decided to spring for a nicer hotel horse in Ume Villas is a little bit newer, but the view from the room was absolutely worth it. Plus that amazing tub at $200 a night. This was actually really affordable for the two of us to spend five amazing nights in Ubud, Bali. Like, I'm always gonna pick some kind of animal related excursion at least once, right? Like, Correct. We do always do animal and water. That's what I feel like. It's always, and usually a boat. Yep. Because a boat. a boat and usually alcohol if that's preferable. <laughs> but at least a boat. But then, yeah, because I just like animals. I feel like as a kid, so we're gonna go do some animal stuff today. Well, a lot of animal stuff today. We're at the zoo. We're at the zoo. In Bali. In Bali. Like we said, like we promised. Like we promised. Because it's always an adventure with us. Always. And then at the end, but did you die? But did you die? And the answer is always no, look, because she's still here. I've never killed her yet. Okay? And it is me. I'll own that. It is me. 
Pink I am look. the one. I feel like did you go to Bali if you didn't do anything elephant related? There are so many different things to choose from. We booked directly through the Bali Zoo to do their experience. I will say we got a little bamboozled with this. I thought that we were going to have kind of more of a sanctuary situation instead of just a full on mud bath. So please keep that in mind. Me and Chrissy did not get in the mud. We just felt like it was not hygienic. But the experience itself was really fun to feed the elephants, get up close and personal. And they also included lunch with the tickets as well. And then, of course, the rest of the time you could spend exploring the zoo. And they had so many cute animals. They had the otters. They had some fun walk through areas where you can see lemurs and things like that. So it was a really great experience overall. However, if you're wanting something that is very much more elephant related, not riding elephants, but also a little bit more hygienic, I would consider finding a different excursion. Because there is a 12 hour time difference, by the time we got back from the zoo, we were both pretty exhausted and we planned for this. So that's why we decided that for the afternoon, we would hang out and enjoy the amenities at our hotel, which includes a free tea time where you not only get tea, but you get lattes as well. Then we hung out by the pool, enjoying that beautiful, gorgeous view before eating dinner at the hotel and crashing super early because the next day we also had an early morning planned out. Sorry, on the way to a uh, lunch place, we can fish at the uh, rice terrace. And the last one, we're going to waterfall. Okay. That's the plan. Perfect. But the thing is, uh, in Tirtagaga, it's no problem. It's no queue. Okay. But in the gate of heaven, it's yeah. the fastest queue. It could be more than two hours. Ooh, okay. Yeah, but we can do some activity there, like you take some breakfast. Okay. And also a nice uh, spot around that. The view with Mount Agum. All right. That's for the plan. I hope all going well. It, me as a driver and pilot drone. This is Madi, my friend, as a professional photographer. Amazing. Very excited. Today. We did. I'm mad I just realized this. <laughs> oh, we're both in orange, that orange, because it hit different when you melanated. You know, you have to uh, be honest.
church of ganga is so beautiful i will say that you should probably budget at least an hour honestly even two i do wish that we could have spent more time here having a tea just really relaxing it's so gorgeous it's so serene the koi fish are super gorgeous and if you do get there early we got there around 9 a.m there's absolutely not a lot of people so you can snap your photos and have plenty of time to just enjoy but because we did this as part of a package we kind of rushed through this a little bit more than i was hoping for a couple of notes about the gates of heaven if you are on your period if you are menstruating you are actually not allowed inside please be respectful of this do not be one of those girlies who just lies and goes in any way also, you are going to be required to be covered, not just your shoulders, but you will be required to wear a sarong no matter what you are wearing. So just keep that in mind as you are planning an outfit. The other thing is that even in the slow season, as we were actually in the more slower season, it still took about three hours before we were able to get our photos while it is organized. Sometimes you are going to run into people with large groups. And so one number might be a group of 15 people. You do not need to grab the photo. I will say do this as a personal preference what i would actually recommend is if you go to the bottom you can get an almost even better photo because you get like the dragons along with the gates as well however you won't get the mountain in the background so this is definitely a dealer's choice i think that the photos that i got came out really really amazing but do you need to sit there for three hours that again is a personal preference but i felt as though with my morning coffee, with some good conversation, it really was no different than just taking your time sitting around at a coffee shop and just kind of enjoying the view and being somewhere. So just keep that in mind. You will be there for a while and plan accordingly. After the gates of heaven, we stopped by a beautiful rice field to capture some fun drone footage and some photos before grabbing lunch and doing a swing over a rice terrace. The bonus to this was we didn't have to wait in line for three hours. The swing was right there. We were able to get on. It was about a 20 minute experience and it was really, really fun. And of course, as you can see, the photos, the videos, totally giving absolutely something you should do while in Bali. Our last stop was this beautiful waterfall. I really, really love this. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are visiting waterfalls, the water is cold, okay? While the photos are great, the water, it's like freezing so please 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 keep that in mind pack a towel but i really loved this specific waterfall over all the other ones because of the little pool area they had in front you could lounge you could hang out and it was really really fun but unfortunately we didn't get to spend as much time here as we wanted because we had reservations at the chef's table restaurant room for dessert The room for dessert experience was so much fun. I really love that they took you through the garden beforehand, sat you down for you to have your mouge bouge, and we did the spirited cocktail combination. So we had a time, cheers to every single cocktail. The food was definitely a really, really great mix. I will say it's not what a lot of people are probably expecting. They had some very interesting textures, very interesting flavors. If you are a picky eater, I would say you should go ahead and skip this, but as someone who loves to try different foods and really wanted to have a fun experience, this was really, really great. They took you into separate rooms for the different parts of the meal, for the desserts. You went to their back, more intimate area, as you saw. And then for your final tasting, you were outside in nature, and it just was a really, really overall 
a great experience that I'm glad I was able to have with my bestie. Conversations part one. We have Chrissy Travis and your host, as always, Jordan Blackwell. Okay, so it is day three. We did a beautiful morning, and Chrissy was my assistant to help me take some photos down by the pool. It was, I'm not gonna say an ordeal, but the hard part with some of the hotels, obviously, is you want to get up. I try and go before the other guests because I don't like to inconvenience people. Even on vacation, as Chrissy, I think I do a good job of like, you do. Really? Yeah, like I don't try and take a long time like taking photos i also want to enjoy like some of the vacation so we did that you we had get up get it out the way yeah yep get it up get out the way and move on so we did that and we are now on our way to finn's day club for the whole afternoon into the evening very excited to check it out enjoy of course day club vibes beach and such so that's going to be day three let's get into it There are tons of beach clubs that you can go to. Most of them are further down towards like the Simiac area and towards the airport. We specifically chose Finn's because it got recommended by a friend of mine who went earlier in the year, said she had tons of fun. I will say it is a two and a half hour drive from Ubud. So keep that in mind as you're planning this. We did decide to keep Ubud as our home base, but you could easily do a couple nights in Ubud and then a couple of nights closer to the airport to make this easier because we also did do Uluwatu as you will see, and that probably would have been the strategy I went with, knowing what I know now. However, Finns was a total vibe. They play a little bit more house music, so if you're looking for R&B, rap, that kind of stuff, this ain't the place, unfortunately, and I don't know that there really is a place. If you know of one, please leave it in the comments for everybody who is looking because the struggle can feel super real trying to find our music when abroad, but I personally do not mind house music. My parents grew up on house music. They are from Chicago. That was definitely their era, so I had a good time. The other thing to keep in mind is you do not have to do the VIP package. While it was really nice because we didn't have to pay as we go, we really didn't have to keep in mind how much money or keep cash or keep our card on us. You also will find that depending on what package you choose, it is a lot of money to go through. So the fun fact is that your auntie is gonna put you onto, you can actually get your food and stuff to go at the end of the night. So if you want, save up some IDR, grab you a couple of desserts and some snacks because when I say that two hour drive back, I really was wishing we had a little more snacks with us. Other than that, we really enjoyed ourselves. The restaurants, at least the one that we signed up for, they had the same menu in the restaurant as the VIP area. So I'm not gonna say you have to go and sit in the restaurants while you're there because it seemed like the menus were the same. So keep that in mind too if you're trying to decide if you should get just a seat outside, if you're trying to make a dinner reservation, that the menus are the same. It is now day four. I am super excited. We have another snow morning, so we're gonna finally head into Ubud, walk around, see some of the sites, check out the market, check out the palace before heading to Uluwatu for the evening for an amazing fire dance ritual along with dinner on the beach. When you're planning to explore Ubud, there's actually so, so much to do downtown. I really wish we actually gave ourselves more than just a morning. The other thing is that a lot of the shops do not open up until 10 or 11 a.m. And the reason this is important is because it also is really, really hot around 10 or 11 a.m. So don't think that you need to get up early to get into town to do the shopping because a lot of places will not be open. Actually, you might wanna consider going more in the afternoon, later around like four or five when the sun is starting to set. A lot of the markets are bustling then and that's the best time to really kind of get out and about. The other thing you wanna make sure is that you do have cash on hand if you plan to shop at any of the places with souvenirs because they do not have card readers in a lot of places, not just the local shops, but even some of the other stores do not accept cards that are not from local banks. So make sure that you do have cash on hand and go to a money exchanger either at the airport 
or back at home before you come abroad, but you can also rely on the ATMs as well to get cash out on the go. Glasses. I feel like it might be safe here though for your glasses, but not when we try and leave again because the monkeys were snatching glasses. So, just a warning don't say we didn't tell you anything, don't say we didn't do nothing for you. Your auntie will always put you on and tell you to be prepared. Rich auntie will always put you on, always. always. Save the phone. Yes. <laughs> Our guide was helpful. I feel like if it was just us, we might have lost the phone. It's a normal day. Sometimes slippers. Monkeys can take slippers. Slippers, really? Yeah. One thing we definitely did was chase waterfalls. The waterfall tour was absolutely gorgeous. This was another long day, so please keep that in mind as you're looking at these. A lot of the tours we actually found on Viator or on TripAdvisor if you're trying to figure out where to get excursions or book excursions outside of booking them through a hotel directly, especially if you're gonna do an Airbnb or something. This was so, so fun. Our guide was super knowledgeable and super friendly and that's the other reason I actually don't recommend just renting your own car and doing your own thing because it really was a great time to talk to somebody who is from the country, learn about some of the issues they're facing, learn about the future of the country. It was so enlightening and just so, so useful to have somebody from the country to give you that insight because I do feel like with us trying to travel so independently now, oh, you can get an Uber, or you can just get your own car, you do kind of lose out on immersing yourself in that way where I do think that it is beneficial in a lot of cases to hire a driver or a guide just so that you can really have those conversations that you might not otherwise have.
like i talked about in my packing video one thing to tap into is any local communities especially if you're looking for people of color when i tell you this black and bali event gave me so much life the energy everybody was so friendly so helpful so resourceful i finally learned how to play spades i'm not gonna say i'm good but i finally learned how to play and everyone just was so eager to talk the other thing i learned from this event how many black women felt so comfortable traveling solo there was at least three or four women who had came to bali by themselves and were having the time of their lives but also because they had this black and bali resource where they did have people they could talk to or connect with or meet up with it just made them feel even more comfortable and i want to echo that i felt so comfortable as a black woman here i don't know that there are many places i have felt more uncomfortable than just being here in the u.s but when i say traveling in bali i really felt so safe the only other place i felt this safe was definitely iceland because of course iceland is also a very small island so everybody knows everybody there's just not a lot of crime there and i felt the same way in bali just the people were so peaceful so nice and again it was just this sense of community that i feel like really really was what resonated with me the most during this trip If there's one thing that you do on your trip to Bali, please try and do some kind of cleansing ritual. We ended up at Turta and Pool just outside of Ubud for our last day because we had a later flight out. And when I say this was so amazing because what I do love about some of the other religions, Hinduism especially, one, they're just very open. So going into this, they were like, don't feel that you have to pray to our gods, pray to who you pray to add whatever you add from your own religion as you go through this process the point is just to really be focused i thought that was so beautiful i loved that every morning every afternoon every night they gave up their offerings they said their wish and it was that reminder that sometimes it's so easy to lose focus especially in the u.s our lives are so busy and so having a reminder three times a day of kind of like what you're hoping for what your intentions are can really be powerful Again, the chase car coming in clutch, the priority pass, checking out the Concordia lounge. When I say the food here was delicious. And of course I could get my little fancy latte, get me a little lychee tea. I was so content before getting on our 12 hour flight from Bali to Istanbul. Fun fact, if your layover is long enough in Turkey, they actually have through Tour Istanbul a package where that you can buy your visa for $30, make sure you have cash, and you can do an excursion in Istanbul during your layover free of charge. So we ended up being able to do the bus tour. We leave out of customs, they have a locker where you can store your stuff. We got on a bus, we were able to go into Turkey and take in the views. I did not expect Turkey, especially Istanbul, to be as big as it was i think he said there was like 17 million people living there alone i've never thought of turkey as a travel destination but after this honestly i really do want to add turkey to my bucket list After the excursion, we went back to the IGA lounge to have a little bit more food in our stomachs, take advantage of my priority pass before that 12 hour flight back to Miami. If you're not sure what to wear to Bali, go ahead and check out my packing for Bali video next. If you have that travel bug and you really want to get more destination information, go ahead and watch my travel vlog playlist. I have been to a lot of different countries 
Iceland, Spain, Greece, Jamaica, tons of information about where to stay and things to do in these destinations, especially as a person of color. So check that out next.